This is Princey Seats Channel, your preferred channel for most current and detailed content and information needed. You are welcome. If you are new kindly subscribe and press the notification button for onward information. Thank you. The template for disbursement of UAAG grant as expected over time is hereby explained. Do kindly pay attention to these details. Let's quickly delve deep into the first concept of this discussion, which is the, the template, the disbursement template. We are aware that before now there were speculations that the bundle head will be entitled to 20 million, 50 million naira, or even 100 million naira. But along the course of the activity, it was again peddled that this uh, bundle heads and recipients will not be entitled to all those outrageous sums. In some WhatsApp and Telegram groups, there are uh, dimensions that are holding that the bundle head and recipient will all benefit from the UAAG grant as recipient, thus there is no provision for bundle heads. This rumor holds that both bundle heads and recipients or beneficiary will be entitled to only 100,000 Naira, while an NGO will be given only 700 beneficiary slots to disburse. That implies there's no one bundle, no two bundle, 100 bundles or even 1,000 bundles as NGOs formally uh, submitted or applied for. Is this actually true? Going by realities, recently during a meeting of partners of the UAAG country director and the NGO CEOs, the country director stated authoritatively that those that are peddling these rumors should desist from it, that there is not, nothing like bundles allocation and there is no entitlement that is spelled out because he has not received this money from the donors and he actually doesn't know how much the bundle head or beneficiary will be entitled to. It is in this same vein that he assured everyone that what the UAAG hold in stock for everyone is reasonably enough. And we remember a few days ago where Pastor Binwagbo actually urged everyone that this is not a loan. The grant is a free money that is given by an individual, a non-governmental organization to you, an individual. So whatever you are being given, go to the church and thank God for that because you actually doesn't have to pay back this. It's a free money. In this way, I am equally joining my voice and fed with the country director and other UAAG management to assure all subscribers of this grant that the money that is going to be available is reasonably enough to solve or take Nigerians out of poverty. There are some certain members of the grant community that say that it is actually the government that is calling for a reduction or a downward review of the entitlement of bundle heads from the millions of naira to few thousands. Is it actually true? I equally remember when they said the, when huge amounts of money is churned into circulation, it will worsen the already existing inflationary state in Nigeria. I asked a banker how can pumping millions of naira into circulation worsen the economic state. He said that, imagine that 100 million naira or 50 million naira is given to 50 million Nigerians. And these Nigerians were farmers, traders, artisans and vocational uh, skills peddlers. This money is in their custody and they turn away from farming. That means there will be food scarcity. Then, if they were working as laborers in companies, that implies there will be scarcity of labor. So, if people hold millions of naira, according to him, it will force them to abandon their menial services, farming, trading, and the rest uh, vocational services, and look at how they should select a reasonable life and leave. Some may even think of traveling out of Nigeria as the case may be, by so doing, affecting the already worsened economic state. But come to look at it, uh, in my view, I'm looking at this reason of the government reducing the money to thousands, how it actually affects the economy. We know how the economic state is hardly beaten by either the high price of goods and services, against scarcity of resources, then suffering on families. 
people dropping out of school, people being sick without having money to treat themselves. It's already a very thin state in Nigeria. So if your money is not going reasonably circulating into families, the situation will even get worse because the effect of poverty, third degree poverty as it is, is actually forcing uh, young people, females, into uh, transactional sexual relationships. We have seen how since the advent of economic recession, how so many young girls are getting pregnant, dropping out of school, how people are getting sick by the day. This is even the worst of case that is more dangerous for a society than money increasing or worsening inflation or inflationary states, which is even worse is it when our young girls are going into domestic aid services, transactional prostitution. Is that what the country wants? So the worst of it is when people are not even having access to money to start a business. If an individual have a hold of 20 million naira, I know that there will be increase in work access. There are youths that should have access work in this nation, but they don't simply have money to buy data and browse the internet places to search for work. They don't actually have money to pay buses or transport around to seek for work. And this again is worsening the already unemployment state. So if money is going into circulation, it will boost access of job by youths, thereby reducing the unemployment state. So I will urge the federal government and every other key players or authority that is in charge of allocation of these grants to Nigeria to actually increase the volume of money that is coming into circulation to the middle and the lower class the poor people because these are people that drive the economy they will go into a mechanized farming some will go into expansive trading to importing and exporting of goods and services these are all factors that will increase the economy let governments not fear that they will not control the money in circulation or rather there is a cbn policy that says you can withdraw physical cash more than 5 million naira for a company account. So if they regulate in such basis, that means government is still in control of the spending. If an individual is transferring money from one account to another to engage in services, is still under the supervision of the government. It will not overflow this matter rather than appeal to government institution to allow bundle heads and a recipient to have access to millions of naira to start out business, build strong families, boost the GDP and build strong societies for our posterity. Okay, so let's delve deep to the second concept of this discussion today, which is the new grants that is peddled by Power of Five in the grant ecosystem. There are some grant subscribers that are feeling uneasy about this. Uh, some grant subscribers are seeing this new grant as coming in the same trajectory of the previous grant. That is, the same way Joba grants distract people away from the same, the Tepacon, St. Rita and Golden Bridge. The same way UAAG distracts people from Joba's grant is the same way the Power of Five NGO is distracting people away from UAAG grants. So is it actually true that the same way that uh, Gilbert grants distract people away from Sam, Telpacon, Golden Bridge, Mama Supreme and the rest, or the same way UAAG grants distract people away from the Gilbert grant, is it the same way that the Power of Five grant is distracting people away from UAAG grant? Then it's reasonably, I will join force with others, uh, agitators in the grant ecosystem that since the power of five grants is going to be dispersed according to them by March, we are building up, gravitating our energies, anticipating the disbursement of UAAG grants in January. The power of five grants should wait till February or even March before they commence their mobilization. A way that if this, the power of five grants may come to be history repeating itself that every time a new grant comes in to distract people from an undisbursed grant, 
let the same fate not repeat again in this UAAG case. Let UAAG disburse first before the power of five grand. I think that is equally what I'm campaigning for as a subscriber of grant in the grant ecosystem. Let affliction not repeat the second time. Let's not allow history to repeat itself again. Let's allow uh, about to be disbursed grants to disburse first before ushering in a new grant. We are not desperate in receiving it. We have been waiting for seven good years. We can equally wait for another three weeks, another three months. We can wait for the first quarter to elapse before we think or talk about the uh, a new grant that is coming into to the ecosystem. Wait until the UAAG complete their disbursement. Let's now look at the last concept of this discussion, which is debt of disbursement of UAAG grants. A few days ago, I have actually come across a post on a WhatsApp and Telegram group that said the CBN governor is not resuming job until it is on the 15th of January. That means we should not expect the UAAG grant until after 15. That's a fallacy. There are people that are peddling rumors to increase blood pressure of some people in the ecosystem. The CBN will resume the activity since on the 3rd or 2nd of January. They were working, so why should someone come in with a dictum of the CBN governor resuming after 15 or on the 15th? When is the Federal Account Allocation Committee always sitting and disbursing money to the federal institutional account for payment of federal civil servants and the likes? It's always around the 15th, 16th of the month. So why will the CBN resume on the 15th and sit for FAC on the same date? CBN has already resumed the activity. The only th consideration was that in the first week, some people that have gone to holiday might only be returning in the weekend of the first week. Then we don't expect them to resume work in the first two, three days of the new year. We can always expect the UAAG grant schedule for the next second week and the third week. By that time, everyone might have returned from their holidays and resumed work. But already, CBN has resumed their operations. I'm even aware that it is on Tuesday, this Tuesday that just passed, that the CBN lift ban in cryptocurrency and send letters to institutions on the modalities of operating crypto. So in that case, it's an evidence that such a letter before being published in the public uh, platforms might have been endorsed by the CBN governor. And you know the CBN governor will not endorse such letter in his bedroom, he's in the office. The CBN governor has resumed his oppression. Debts of disbursement of UAAG grant. When is the grant going to be disbursed? This has been one of those factors that has given people unrest nervousness and anxiety in recent times i keep telling my audience that uaag grants just like apostle ken has said has reached or attained a point of no return he said we have crossed the red sea we have crossed the red sea simply implies we have moved ahead of instances or realities that should limit the disbursement of the grants that means all the necessary requirements for the grant is fulfilled so people should stop troubling their hearts uaag grant will be disbursed i know the times are hard everywhere is dry yes january is always dry but the uaag grant is from the all indication is going to be disbursed in january build your faith become so confident in this so that you will not undergo health emergencies even when the grant is disbursed. You need good health to unfold this grant. Believe it is going to be a reality. Start hoping on disbursement from the second week or third week of January. Even if it is disbursed in the first quarter of 2024, at any moment in between this time sketch, we can start building a long-term profitable life for ourselves and families or societies. This is the only grant that I'm so confident will be disbursed for the first time by a non-governmental agency in Nigeria. Going by the occurrences, going by the people, the classes of people that are involved in it. We have not gotten it this far. UAAG grant becomes one of those realistic grants that is going to be disbursed in Nigeria for the first time in history. 
and after this other grant it will pave way for the disbursement of other grants in the nigerian territorial system trouble not your heart keep your faith strong have faith on the country director of the uaag apostle ambassador ken wakama he has been so consistent going by his activities going by the arrangements the transparency the consistency this is one certain grant that is not going to fail in nigeria stop troubling your heart the new week we are facing the second week of january is going to hold good news testimonies and good luck